okay with translation. <laughs> not too hungry, not too tired, <laughs> not too sick. What else do we have as well? As we mature in age, we even have that when we're not so mature in age. We speak of mature in age. So again, welcome to those from far and near. Some faces are not clear. I'll just clean my glasses. <laughs> and some devotees, I am not familiar as far as I know. Hopefully, we will be comfortable. So I thought today, this morning, normally, we read from the Prabhupada Lila meeting. En général, on lit le Sri Prabhupada Lila Mrita. So this morning we read from another Lila Mrita. Et ce matin, donc, on va lire un Lila Mrita. It's also a Prabhupada Lila Mrita. Il y a également un Prabhupada Lila Mrita. But it's the Prabhupada of our Prabhupada. Mais là, c'est Prabhupada lui-même qui parle de Prabhupada. Recently, when we were in Sri Mayapur, we were fortunate to be there on the occasion of the uh, Abhir Bhav Mahotsav, the appearance day of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj. So at that time, just before, a few days before that occasion, I decided to uh, Reread a biography, not so much a biography, but a, um, a uh, let's say, ex, how can you say, it? an amazing literature about the life and teachings of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj. Et juste avant cette célébration, j'ai décidé de relire un ouvrage <coughs> qui célèbre tous les. La, la personnalité et les actes, les œuvres de Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. So we started off reading there uh, the book called Bhakti Siddhanta Vaibhav. C'est un ouvrage qui s'appelle Bhakti Siddhanta Vaibhav. It's a three volume um, presentation. Three volume production. Trois volumes. Three volume production. Trois volumes. Volume. Trois volumes. Three books. Three you. <laughs> We're trying to be serious right here. <laughs> and uh, we got so absorbed in it that I think within three weeks we completed the entirety of the text. And with a lecture serious, I've to finish Cet ouvrage, ces trois, ces trois volumes d'ouvrage en, en trois semaines. So this morning, I, I'd like to read one of the earlier sections. This is one of the volumes. There are three of them. Ah, ça c'est un des trois ouvrages, des trois volumes de. de and there are about 500 pages in two, and the other one about 300. So about 1,300 pages in all. Madhu Jvala Prema Dhyashi Rupa Nuga Bhakti Dha 
Shri Gora Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namostate Namaste Goravani Shri Murtaye Dina Tarine Rupa Nuga Viruda Apasadanta Gwanta Harine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Obeisances to all the Vaishnavas assembled here today. The uh, first section of this literature called Bhakti Siddhanta by Bhav deals with the uh, you could say outline of just like our Prabhupada Lila Amrita, the life of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj. Le premier tome de cet ouvrage de Bhakti Siddhanta Sarvabhava donc euh, traite de la vie même de Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. The next section you could say deals with the specific purposes of his appearance in this world. Et la section suivante parle plutôt des raisons spécifiques de son apparition en ce monde. We're not going to get into, um, let's say, some of the external aspects of that. Sans aller dans les aspects externes de ces raisons-là. But we'd like to read a little bit about one of the internal ones. Mais nous allons lire quelque chose qui traite plutôt des raisons internes de son apparition. And this is chapter 5 of this section. C'est le chapitre 5. And if you have your Bhakti Siddhanta Vaibhavas with you, you can open your books and follow. <laughs> it's not, I don't know if you have this book available here. Some of you may have. How many of you have this, these volumes? <laughs> One or two others from the Gopal family, maybe you have also. It's, I don't think it's in the library, I'm not sure. Even if it is, it probably isn't there anymore. <laughs> where it was. Um, well, it is, it's, 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 you know, as I say, it's not so common um, in bookshops, but it's an incredible, um, let's say, eye-opening experience. Mais c'est un livre vraiment important, intéressant, qui ouvre vraiment les yeux. C'est une expérience assez extraordinaire de lire tout ce qui a trait ainsi à Shri Bhakti Siddhanta. This chapter is especially eye-opening. En particulier, le chapitre que nous allons lire maintenant donne vraiment une nouvelle vision des choses. It is entitled in English, "The Seer and the Seen." Le titre de ce chapitre en anglais c'est "See and Seen," ça veut dire celui qui voit et celui qui et ceux qui sont vus. For a condition so, this subject matter doesn't sound like much of a subject matter really and we all think I'm the seer and what I see is seen. Ça semble pas très euh, un problème pour moi conditionné on va dire ben oui moi c'est moi, moi je vois et les choses qui sont vues. The topic might be well you're seeing it one way and I'm seeing it the other that's Après bien sûr on va dire ben oui vous voyez d'une certaine façon moi d'une autre façon Maybe your means of seeing are a little different than mine. Votre façon de voir est peut-être différente de la mienne. There is, you could say, spiritual truth behind that also. Il y a quelques vérités spirituelles sur ce point-là aussi, c'est vrai. But we we'll get right to the point now. Mais maintenant, nous allons vraiment au cœur du sujet. So this is a quote um, from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj. Voilà d'abord une citation de Shula Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj. Drashta, a Sanskrit word, means the seer. En sanskrit, le celui qui voit, ça se dit drashta. And drishya means the seen. Et drishya, c'est celui qui est Drashta and drishya. Seer and seen. Drashta et drishya. Voir so, et être vu. The question which he raises in this 
statement here. It's Ari Drashya or Ari Drishya. Materially, you could also say both in one sense, because some people are seeing you and you're seeing some people. So you're seeing and you're also seen. And then he says, Bhaktisiddhanta Maharaj says, whatever I have to say, my whole message, my whole message is based on proper comprehension of this truth. Et je suis le Bhaktisiddhanta dit alors que quoi que j'ai à dire, mon message, mon, 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 mon message complet, ça, ça a trait à, ce, à cette explication. It's a uh, quite a foundational, we could say, or essential understanding if we want to progress in spiritual life. Donc, c'est une compréhension qui est essentielle, qui sert de fondation à notre progrès spirituel. Then he goes on to say, but how few people have really understood this big drishya vichara. Mais Monsieur Bhaktisiddhanta, combien ont compris vraiment cette vérité sur Drishya et voilà. Drishya Drishya Vichara. Voilà. Yeah, translate into French. <laughs> <laughs> the truth of the seer and the seen. And there is a footnote, which I guess we can read. Drig or Drish in this verse is um, in this particular verse um, may be translated into English as vision, seeing, the eye or knowing. Donc ce terme Drig ou Drisha en anglais, euh, donc en français, veut dire la vision ou euh, l'œil, ce qui voit. It can also mean discerning, également discerner, and thus comprises multiple. Oh, this is not going to be finished. This is impossible to translate. Uh, one in this book, you will find in some places the English language is ununderstandable even by linguists or literatures. It's so elevated. Maintenant, il y a un terme en anglais qui est utilisé par Sri Bhaktisiddhanta, et, mais c'est un anglais tellement euh, érudit, évolué, que même euh, comment les anglais ne connaissent, comprennent pas. This is one of the reasons that not so many devotees have read this book. C'est une des raisons pour laquelle il n'y a pas trop de dévots qui ont lu ce livre. Because the English for many is not easy to follow, even for English speaking, kind of educated, not just ordinary, but educated. L'anglais utilisé qui rapporte la parole de M. Bhaktisiddhanta n'est pas facile à comprendre même pour les, les anglais instruits. As you know, that was one of the external aspects, you could say, of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Maharaj's preaching was his usage, incredible usage of English words, very unusual words. C'est d'ailleurs un des aspects externes de, cet, de l'enseignement de Srila Bhaktisiddhanta, c'est qu'il utilisait également de, Enfin, il utilisait justement euh, toutes sortes de, de mots anglais euh, inhabituels. So I'll try to translate, or let's say, interpret this in rather in easier English words, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will not be understood. So he says that um, various uh, angles of vision or understanding are there for the seer and the seen. Donc il y a différents euh, points de vue sur cette, euh, pour cette compréhension de celui qui voit et celui qui est vu. So, these two words, the drashta, the one who is seeing, and the drishya, the object of our sight. Voilà, donc ces deux termes, euh, drashta, euh, celui qui voit, et drishya, l'objet de sa, sa vision. And let's see what this is here. This 
uh, section has been taken entirely from an article written by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj. Ce passage vient d'un article qui a été écrit par Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj. It's an essay. Actually, it's an essay which was published after he left this world. En fait, c'est un, un article qui a été publié après sa disparition. Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj said that only one of his disciples truly understood this Drig Drishya Vichar. Only one. Monsieur Bhakti Siddhanta disait lui-même qu'il n'y avait qu'un seul de ses disciples qui comprenait ce concept du euh, Drishya Vichar. Mm -hmm. Of course, at that particular time, Arshir Prabhupada was not very prominent in, you could say, amongst the members or the disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. Bien sûr, on peut dire qu'à cette époque-là, Srila Prabhupada, notre Srila Prabhupada, n'était pas euh, très en vue parmi les disciples de Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. The topic of Drashta, the seer and the seen, is discussed in Bhagavad Gita also. Ce sujet est d'ailleurs euh, présenté dans la Bhagavad Gita. Is also there in Shrimad Bhagavatam and many other Shastras. Dans Bhagavatam également et dans d'autres euh, textes védiques. But Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati clarified and stressed a point perhaps more than any previous Acharya. Shri Bhakti Siddhanta avait souligné ce, ce concept plus que n'importe quel autre Acharya. And here, it must be a quote from Bhakti Siddhanta directly. A bogey, and you know who a bogey is? Mm -hmm. Who's a bogey? Any bogeys here? <laughs> Hands up all the bogeys. <laughs> lots of bogeys sitting here. Huh? I'm a rogi. Bogeys and a rogi. Huh? A bogey. A bogey is defined here as one who attempts to enjoy the world. Monsieur Bhaktisanta parle d'un bogey, ça veut dire quelqu'un qui essaie de prendre plaisir en soi. Try to control your stomach for a little while, okay? Are you okay? Not too disturbed? Consider a bogey considers himself drashta. Un bogey se considère drashta. What is Drashta? The seer. The seer. He considers himself the seer. And everything else, including the Supreme Lord, to be Drishya. So when he comes in from the day, he thinks, I am seeing Krishna. Par exemple, lorsqu'il se présente devant les mortels, Krishna is an object of my vision. Il se présente devant les déités et dit, je vois Krishna, Krishna est l'objet de ma vision. This person is an object of my vision. Cette personne, c'est l'objet de ma vision. I am taking darshan. I am going for darshan. Je vais prendre darshan. This morning's darshan was very nice. Darshan ce matin était vraiment bien. We also speak like this, and maybe a little mixed, you could say, in our understanding, but it's not entirely a mess. It's not entirely a mess. It's not entirely wrong. Bien sûr, ce n'est pas complètement faux. And then he goes on. Due to their bitter experience of this world, so-called renouncers, we, uh, this is a long sentence, I don't even get it, so-called renouncers, especially the Mayavadism, with wish to deny the plurality or the differences between Drashta, Drishya, and Darsha, and thus regard them as one. Donc, du fait de leur expérience, mauvaise expérience, expérience amère de, 
plaisir de ce monde, certains pseudo-renonçants, euh, on va faire quoi suite, euh, voudraient éliminer cette différence entre celui qui voit, ceux qui sont vus, et la vision, Rashta, Drishya et Darsha. You can say that's like the other extreme, you know, it's, there's no difference between anything, between you, what you see, and everything, the object, everything is the same. C'est le point de vue donc, des, des mayavadis, des impersonnalistes. Tout est un, il n'y a pas de différence entre vous, moi, celui qui est vu, celui That's qui est vu. That's also not correct. To see the duality or the imperfectness of material vision or the, let's say, the incompleteness of the mayavad vision. Donc c'est un point de vue qui est erroné, incomplet en tout cas au minimum, ce point de vue des mayavadis qui refuse toute euh, diversité, pluralité. Only devotees have the proper vision to appreciate that Krishna is the supreme and joyous. Seuls les dévots ont cette euh, qualité de pouvoir comprendre que Krishna, euh, c'est lui, c'est lui pour lequel tout est fait pour son plaisir à lui. And alone is fully independent and is no one's servant. Le Seigneur est totalement indépendant et il n'est le serviteur de personne. But being drashta, drashta means Krishna is the drashta. But being drashta, Krishna should be served by all. Mais Krishna étant le drashta, celui qui voit, il devrait être servi par tous. For the jivas. And all else, that means everything else that exists, are drisha, which means that which is seen. Everything that exists is drisha. Krishna is the drisha. Car tous les êtres Make vivants, sense or not? You got it? tout ce qui existe est euh, drisha, c'est-à-dire l'objet de la vision du seul. In the in conditioned state, we, we tend to see ourselves separate, and we see ourselves in the center, isn't it? La vie conditionnée, on a tendance à se voir le centre séparé de Krishna et soi-même le centre. Oh, it's a nice day today. No. <laughs> oh, that tree is very beautiful. <laughs> What are they doing here this morning? Who invited them? <laughs> Whatever, uh, you know, let's say self-centered perception is. On apprécie ce qu'on voit, les personnes, tout ça, mais on reste le centre de cette appréciation, cette vision. This object is so far away from me. Cet objet-là est très éloigné de moi. That does not smell. Very nice. Ça ne sent pas particulièrement bon. To somebody else is different, right? Et Everyone sees it differently. Et pour quelqu'un d'autre, ce sera une vision différente. It may smell very nice to you. Ça peut, quelqu'un dira, mais ça sent très bon. It may look very different to you. Et moi, je trouve ça très bien. You may hear something different than what I hear. Vous entendez peut-être quelque chose de différent de ce que moi j'entends. So who's right? Alors, qui a, qui a raison? I'm right, of course I'm right. <laughs> This is the underlying problem of the world, isn't it? It expands to every walk of existence in our conditional life. What do you think? Even in, in, the, in the echelons or in the, of the world of religion. Very more than most things, actually. Absolute misunderstanding of identity. And who is God? And who am I? Tout ça vient d'une une fausse conception, une mauvaise conception de notre vraie identité. I have the real God. Your God is not God at all. Qui est Dieu? My God is God. 
Funny Krishna, I was chanting yesterday in tour. I couldn't keep up with the Harinam party after a while, so I sat down. I took a chair with me purposely. <laughs> and I sat down and chanted alone for about maybe 40 or 50 minutes. Different people actually came up. One of them was a very jovial Indian Christian from Pondicherry, I believe. <laughs> Il y a différentes personnes qui l'ont abordé. L'un d'eux, c'était un Indien un jovial, un chrétien du Pondichéry. Il était très polite, mais très quite adamant about the fact that we are wrong and he is right. That right, that was a good one. Très poliment, il était. Il en bougé. I will pray for you, he said, that you will return to your senses and surrender to Jesus. Il était convaincu et voulait absolument. If I can surrender to Jesus, I will. And he did, right there on the street, he began a prayer. <laughs> I went along, I was very happy. But he was a friendly man, and the way he went. Cannot see the divinity or the transcendent situation. So God is almost, even myself, I say, I'm happy. But that's not really the essential feature, is that Krishna is meant to be happy. Donc le point, c'est qu'il faut remettre le Seigneur à sa place. C'est Krishna qui est censé être l'objet du plaisir qu'on doit lui offrir. Anyway, without getting into details beyond that, we can see that this uh, self-centered perception pervades just about everything within our realm of experience in this world. Quoi qu'il en soit, cette façon de voir les choses centrée sur soi-même, c'est ce qui existe partout en ce monde. All of our likes and dislikes, friends and enemies, etc. Even our prayers, everything is focused on that. Toutes les choses qu'on aime ou qu'on n'aime pas, tous les gens qu'on aime ou qu'on n'aime pas, tout cela vient de notre propre vision des choses, d'où c'est moi le centre. Shri Saraswati Thakur often expounded or spoke on very much on Goloka Darshan, spiritual vision, versus Jagat Darshan or worldly vision. Shri Bhakti Siddhanta développa donc ce concept de Goloka Darshan, une vision globale à partir du globe. So what would you say is the difference between Goloka Darshan and Jagat Darshan? Comment expliqueriez-vous cette différence? What's the difference? Goloka Darshan et Jagat Darshan. Krishna, Krishna Consciousness. That's a very broad answer, maybe a little more specific. Yes. Try, trying to see everything uh, related to Krishna. Yeah. Yes. Oh. You're getting, we're pretty much there. Did you have anything to add to that, Yashomati? If you don't know, this is Yashomati Nanda. <coughs> he's come from a plane, we're not sure where it is, but he's come from there. Transcendental. Do you have anything to add? In this material world, we are influenced. The soul is bewildered by the three modes of material nature. Okay, now you're getting into a bit too much detail. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it to the simple. Uh, I don't know this. These Germans, they're always very, very highly philosophical people. <laughs> Gorangi! Krishna is the center of everything. Yes. That's the first simplicity, yeah? Instead of saying, me in the center, me, what about me? <laughs> Which is usually what it's all about. Mm. Even Krishna is like related to me, isn't it? Mostly, I like and I don't like. Donc, une vision de Loka, c'est que Krishna soit au centre de tout, c'est lui le centre. Et nous sommes tous à son service, contrairement à ce que l'on voit dans ce monde où euh, tout est centré sur moi, euh, y compris Krishna. So, this Goloka Darshan is to see Krishna in the center. Voilà, Goloka Darshan, voir Krishna comme étant le centre. At our stage, there's a tendency to see whatever we may hear or think we can 
see if Goloka Darshan is still with me in the center. Oh, I don't like that picture. Oh, that's wrong. Here we have all kinds of different discrimination there. Et notre vision conditionnée, c'est nous on fait des, des, on a des dualités. Oui, cette, cette peinture j'aime bien, j'aime pas trop. This prasadam is good, but that prasadam is not good. Ce prasadam <laughs> est bon ou alors non. Give me the good one. <laughs> Let everyone else have the potatoes, but give me the curd. <laughs> Come on, one at Sunday's feast if you have curd sabji. <laughs> I know why they call it curd subji. It's not curd is not a subji. <laughs> I don't even know how to translate that one. That's too disheartening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ouais, ce prasad j'aime bien. Non, non, les pommes de terre, je les veux pas. Donnez-moi le fromage, le panier. Uh oh, here comes a, a wise Dane. A wise Dane coming in here on the attack, <laughs> <laughs> defending curd subji. <laughs> But if Krishna is in the center, he should eat the best prasad. Oh, okay. Well, we agree with that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but we should be willing to accept the mercy of Krishna, not so much discriminative, maybe. And we are supposed to accept the misericorde of Krishna and not make any more difference selon our propos. The curd is made of milk. It's not made of vegetables, is it? Sabji means vegetables. Donc le terme de oh. subji au fromage, euh, c'est pas vraiment oh. adapté. Hein. Oh. Subji, c'est fait de légumes, pas de fromage. We'll read on. We'll get that. We'll, we'll change the subject quick. Bon, on va changer le sujet. And it won't be quick change, but anyway, here we go. Uh, and actually, Krishna is perceived as the center of existence, and everything in this world is paraphernalia for serving him. Everything. Krishna is donc le, au centre de toute existence et de tout plaisir. Et tout le reste n'est que, que des instruments destinés à son plaisir. The previous chapter was called Yukta Varagya. Le chapitre précédent s'était intitulé le Yukta Varagya. What is Yukta Varagya? Uh, same two hands. Any other? Anyone else got hands? Keep your keep your hands down. You have the same two hands that come up quickly again, which is very good. Anyone else like to put a hand up if you have an answer? <laughs> yes. Well, who was that giving an answer over there? Some young Vaishnav. Anyone else? Yukta Varagya. Roughly, that's word for word, but more or less, what does it mean? Okay. Yes, utilizing everything that you can in the service of Krishna and not denying something, but everything we can we utilize for Krishna's service. Donc ce terme yukta viragya, le sens général, ça veut dire tout utiliser au service de Krishna, ne pas rejeter ce qui est utilisable pour lui. And that, by the way, includes our intelligence, our mind, and our senses. Et ça inclut d'ailleurs notre intelligence, notre pensée, notre mental, nos sens. We sometimes think that they're me or something. They're not. On pense parfois que ça c'est moi ça. They're instruments which we have to serve Krishna. Ce sont des instruments que nous avons qui sont destinés à servir Krishna. Like every instrument, you can take any instrument, really, a pen, a computer, a knife. Anything you like, and you have a certain degree of choice what you do with it. Il en va ainsi de tous les objets, un stylo, un couteau, un ordinateur. On peut choisir de quelle façon on va l'utiliser. So yukta varagya is not just a mental, uh, let's say, speculative exercise which we claim is for Krishna. Mm. Donc ce yukta varagya, ce n'est pas juste un exercice de spéculation. Uh, Non, c'est de vraiment utiliser tout pour Krishna. It is following direction how it can be utilized in Krishna's service. Et cela nous aiguille de la façon dont nous devons tout utiliser, c'est-à-dire pour le service de Krishna. So we can see, for instance, in Ishopanishad, how a 
self-realized soul sees things. Par exemple, dans les Upanishads, on voit comment une âme pleinement réalisée voit les choses telles qu'elles sont. Yes, we're not completely devoid of seeing. Of course, we're not. We're part and parcel of Krishna, so we do have a seeing capacity. Otherwise, there's no communication. Bien entendu, nous avons aussi une capacité de vision. Nous aussi, nous voyons. On fait partie de Krishna, donc on a aussi une partie de vision. Sinon, ne pourrait pas, il ne pourrait pas y avoir de communication. Et là, pleinement réalisé, voir toute chose en relation avec Krishna. And in the Bhagavad Gita, you can see chapters, especially in chapter 11, uh, 11, yeah, 10, 11, 7, 9, again and again, Krishna is explaining to us conditioned souls how to see his presence in everything. Et dans plusieurs chapitres, au centre de la Bhagavad Gita, 9, 10, 11, Krishna explique comment voir toutes sortes de choses en ce, moment, en ce monde centré sur lui. If you've read chapter 10 particularly, Arjuna wanted to hear, hear about how Krishna's opulences, how his presence is there in all the, everything of this world, basically. How I can remember you in everything. Dans le chapitre 10, on voit Arjuna qui voudrait demander à Krishna comment voir tout ce qui existe en ce monde sans, par rapport à lui. Krishna va montrer à Arjuna sa forme universelle. Même. So this uh, understanding is received not from speculation, it's received from hearing. Et cette compréhension véritable ne vient pas d'une spéculation mentale, mais d'une écoute. With these two eyes, we cannot. What can we see? Nous, avec nos, nos, nos deux yeux, on peut pas vraiment voir les choses telles qu'elles sont. Something covered, we can't see properly. On peut pas voir correctement. Il y a... As was mentioned, the three modes of nature are covering our vision. Les trois gunas, les trois modes de la nature matérielle voient notre vision. So hearing from the or the proper source, those who can actually see. Now, in the Bhagavad Gita, fourth chapter is a famous verse talking about those who can see. Bien sûr, il y a aussi dans la Bhagavad Gita un verset dans le quatrième chapitre. The same two hands are going up. What's wrong? Even without my glasses, I can see. On parle justement de ceux qui ont une vision. Fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Famous verse, perhaps the most famous in the fourth chapter. There was many actually in that chapter, but one of them. Talking about how important it is to approach one who has seen the truth. Make it easier. Yes, have a second. Yes, Tadjiti, Tadipate, no? Those who have seen the truth. We have to approach such a person because they can give us that proper vision. We pray every day, probably. Om Ajnana Timaranda Syagananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yim Nikasmai Shuri. What does that mean? What does it mean? Sometimes we may not grasp what the prayers mean. The same hands are going up. And uh, it's wonderful to see that young Christopher has been really studying Srila Prabhupada's teachings. Anybody else? Om Jnana Timrandasya, what does it basically mean? Yes, Jnana Timrandasya. I was born in the darkness of ignorance and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. The torchlight of knowledge. The spiritual master gives the torchlight of knowledge. Ce verset donc indique que le maître spirituel qui a la vision vraie, il donne le flambeau de la connaissance qui éclaire. He shines a torch in your eyes. Yow! You have now realized the truth. When he pokes his fingers, self-realization. Ça veut dire que Mais spirituel, il vous braque une, une torche dans les yeux et il appuie sur les globes pour faire voir les 
What is that torchlight of knowledge? Just to see if I have torch with a good sauce. What is that torchlight of knowledge? Okay, hands are going. Okay. Uh, I don't know if this is the right answer, but uh, it's Chakshu Shastra. Shastra Chakshu. Shastra Chakshu. The eye of scripture. Seeing through the scriptures. Voir par les, les yeux des écritures. But he puts it in such a way that it is because otherwise there are so many instructions. According to our disease condition of life, there are different instructions. Et on y trouve beaucoup d'instructions très diverses et selon notre conditionnement. Different directions. They don't know yet, but the whole universe wants to come to New Mayapur. Okay. They don't know it yet, but they do. The whole universe. Ils savent pas encore, mais l'univers entier veut venir à Nouvelle Mayapur. Gopaswam is getting worried. But they're all in different places. Some are on the moon planet, some are on the Saturn, some are on Venus, some are on higher planets, Yanaloka, Kapaloka, etc. Some are in Sutala and Matala and all these other Alas. Uh, no, excuse me. Uh, other places. Il y a tellement de planètes uh, qui veulent venir, peut-être, hein, de tous les planètes supérieures, inférieures. Or even if you're in France, somebody may be in Bordeaux. Somebody may be in Boom, somebody else is in Metz, somebody else is in Brest, somebody else is in Lyon. The goal is the same. Le but c'est le même, même en France. Le but c'est le même. De différentes villes de France, le but sera le même. Even closer, le but c'est le même en Kiev. Next two neighbors. Même s'ils viennent de le but c'est le même avec le Kiev. They offer the end, they're a different direction, same goal. You have to know what is the direction for Luce, not for Mickey, if you're living in Luce. The direction for venir ici, c'est pas la même quand on est accueilli ou Luce le mal, c'est opposé en fait. So that's also understanding what is relevant is important. We don't want to imitate. Donc il faut pas imiter, il faut bien comprendre les choses. So again, one who's seen the truth can give us specific guidance according to our conditioning. Et donc la personne qui a qui a vu la vérité, qui a cette vision de la vérité, il peut nous donner des directives adaptées à notre conditionnement. But we can't say that if he gives instruction to someone in a cave, if we live in Lucy, that that instruction is wrong. Mais s'il donne une, une instruction à quelqu'un qui habite à Écueillé pour venir ici, ce ne sera pas la même qui va, celle qu'il va donner à celui qui habite à Lucé. And this is what different religions and different scriptures are for, to guide different people who are in different conditions. C'est pourquoi il existe différents niveaux de religion pour euh, différentes personnes qui ont différents niveaux de compréhension. But if you give me instructions to McGee and I'm in Lucé le Mal, it's not going to help me. Et si j'habite à Écueillé et qu'on me dit comment faire pour venir en, depuis Lucé le Mal, ça ne va pas m'aider. So this understanding of See things that say, and I've got this example before, it's called a maze. It's a kind of a, in the park sometimes they have these, kind of, I don't know what you call them in French or if you even have them here. It's like bushes, they may be eight foot tall and you're going and trying to find your way in and out and it's called a maze in English. Really fun for the kids especially. Dans des parcs publics, il y a des fois des labyrinthes. And you can't see where you're going until you get there. Et euh, it all looks the same. La barrière végétale empêche de voir, on ne sait pas trop où on va. It's all above, can see. Mais si quelqu'un était au-dessus, il verrait bien, lui. It's like that. We hear from somebody or from authority above the modes, above the conditioning. Donc c'est ce que voit quelqu'un qui est au-dessus des, des gunas. Des They give us the vision. <coughs> Et cette personne-là peut nous donner cette vision. And how do we receive that vision? Et comment allons voir les choses ainsi? Yeah. How? By uh, inquiry, uh, inquiring, submissively and rendering service. That's the practical aspect. Simply by hearing. We simply hear from them. 
Donc on va voir les choses telles qu'ils les voient eux en les écoutant. It used to be the case that if you got lost in your car, you stop your car and you ask somebody. Par exemple, lorsqu'on est perdu en, en voiture, on, on s'arrête et on demande à quelqu'un. Now you have other means of finding your way, uh, Google Maps, the sat-nav, or whatever it's called, GPS. We used to have maps. People don't use maps anymore. Bon, maintenant, aujourd'hui, c'est différent. Euh, on n'utilise même plus les cartes. It's the same yes. principle. We inquire, we hear from some source of authority. Le principe presque, on va demander, euh, on va écouter. Where to go, what to do. Une source qui se connaît les choses. If you want to know about someone, you have to inquire or something. You want to go somewhere, you have to inquire. Where, what's going? We don't have to, but you'll inquire. What is it like there? Si on veut aller quelque part, on connaît. What is New Mayapur like? On va demander. Mais où est-ce que c'est Comment c'est Somebody who knows may tell us. Et quelqu'un qui connaît va pouvoir nous dire. You may develop an interest. C'est intéressant. How do I get there? This is the process of changing our vision. We receive direction from authority, from Shastra, from self-realized souls. Voilà comment on acquiert une vision des choses juste en écoutant des âmes réalisées qui parlent sur la base des Écritures. By Jagat Darshan, or material vision, the Jiva considers himself the center of existence and views everything, everything, including God, as paraphernalia for his personal <coughs> sense enjoyment. Qu'est-ce qu'on dit, la Jagat Darshan, la vision des âmes conditionnées en ce monde, c'est qu'il voit, euh, eux, il se voit, chacun se voit lui-même comme le centre de tout, et toute chose, y compris Dieu, est fait pour sa, son plaisir. Oh God, give me my whatever I want. Oh mon Dieu, donne-moi ceci ou cela, tout ce que j'ai envie, moi. It's a, uh, it's a little pious, but it's not really spirit. It's not spiritual. It's a little pious. Seeing God as our order supplier. Lorsque on, Dieu devient notre serviteur, il répond à nos ordres. Euh, C'est un petit, ça témoigne d'un petit peu de piété. Pas vraiment, pas we are meant for the enjoyment of Krishna. Nous sommes faits pour apporter du plaisir à Krishna. And sometimes when we don't get what we want, we say goodbye to God. Et on voit parfois que si on ne fait pas ce que l'on veut. We look for another God, a different God. On abandonne Dieu ou on va en chercher un autre. Something, another source to try to satisfy our senses. Chercher une autre source de pour so this is another aspect of seeing ourselves as Drushna or the seer. Mais même ces aspects, ce genre de religion, donc sont d'autres aspects, une vision centrée sur soi. It's so nice. By Goloka Darshan, by seeing Krishna in the center, and seeing every, everything is happening ultimately by the hand of the Lord. Dans la vision de Goloka Darshan, tout est fait pour le plaisir de Krishna, tout est sous la direction de Krishna. We've all heard the statement, not a blade of grass moves, but by the will of the Lord. Il y a cet dicton qui dit, il n'y a pas un seul brin d'air qui bouge en dehors de la direction de la volonté du Seigneur. And again, let's say, persons in ignorance will then start blaming God for everything that's going, that they perceive, rather, that what we perceive is going on. Not understanding that that which is going on is directly or indirectly meant to change our perception, not the world itself, but the way we see it. Ils ne comprennent pas que tout ce qui arrive en fait est fait pour que nous changions notre perception des choses et non pas pour changer le monde lui-même tel qu'il est. To give up this constant endeavor to adjust the world to the way we'd like it to be or we think it should be. Cela est fait pour que nous abandonnions cette idée que tout est fait selon notre propre conception des choses. Ça, c'est la vérité, non? By Goloka Darshan, one sees and lives in the spiritual realm 
even while present in the mundane sphere. Mais ce Goloka Darshan, le fait que l'on vit dans le monde spirituel, on n'est plus dans ce monde matériel, même si on y est présent. We see this of the actual, those who are actually spiritually realized souls, they, they may live in this world, as Jesus said, but we're not, they're not of this world. Comme disait Jésus, on peut être dans ce monde, mais ne pas être de ce monde. Okay, well, it's five after nine, and uh, the subject matter, we just read the first page, and stuff a little bit. Um, and it's so important subject matter to delve into. Perhaps we'll read more of the science if anyone wants to hear more. Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj or others commenting on it. Um, Hare Krishna. So now it's time to see ourselves in the center. Almost. It's the time we're all looking forward to. Probably. The break fast time. We've been fasting for at least 12 hours. Of which certain percentages have been sleeping. So this vision, Bhakti Siddhartha says, that our vision changes when we expose ourselves to the sound vibration of the holy name. Le Bhakti Siddhanta dit que cette vision erronée, elle change lorsqu'on s'expose à la vibration sonore transcendantale des saints. When we no longer impose our vision on the holy name, our conditioned vision, or on the Bhagavatam, or on any aspect of the vision. Pour changer cette vision, on doit arrêter d'imposer notre propre vision de, du saint nom, notre vision de, euh, du Bhagavatam, ou de tout ce qui nous entoure. And then gradually, the conscious perception begins to transform. Et graduellement, notre perception consciente se transforme peu à peu. And more and more, we see Krishna's hand in everything that we experience, inside and outside. C'est ainsi que peu à peu, on va voir la main de Krishna dans tout ce que l'on va expérimenter intérieurement ou à l'extérieur. What is the need to become let's say, affected by the dualities that appear before. Apparent duality, we could say. Because we now see this, everything belonging to Krishna. How can we see friends and enemies, likes and dislikes? It's Bhagavad Gita, basic teaching of Bhagavad Gita. C'est l'enseignement de base de la Bhagavad Gita, qu'il n'y a, en fait a pas vraiment de dualité entre ce que nous avons dit. Il n'est pas contrôlé par ces dualités. Donc, nous voyons des choses d'une façon différente de la perception de Krishna. Différentes perspectives de Krishna. On voit les choses d'une perspective différente de celle de Krishna. C'est ça la conscience de Krishna. C'est ça la conscience de Krishna. Not even just thinking of Krishna as good, but still thinking of Krishna in terms of one who is satisfying me. It's nice to just think of Krishna, but if we're thinking of it in sense of that Krishna is the one to satisfy me. C'est bien de penser à Krishna, mais ça ne veut pas être. On pense à Krishna, c'est celui, c'est lui qui me satisfait. We could say it's a stage, but it's not the the platform of. Ça peut être une étape, mais ce n'est pas vraiment le stade transcendantal de Gokhalarsha. Any questions? Question. All problems are solved with proper vision. All problems are solved if we have proper vision. Si nous avons une vision correcte, tous les problèmes seront. Relationships, locations, everything is adjusted by proper vision. Une vision correcte permet de résoudre tous les problèmes relationnels, quels qu'ils soient. Christopher.
except from the morning program and the Bhagavatam class, uh, how much minimum we should try to hear, like to hear from a uh, Prabhupada or bona fide? Uh, 24 hours a day. Okay. 24 hours a day. In everything we do. The question of Mr. First is, outre the program du matin, the Bhagavatam, etc., combien de temps par jour on devrait donc écouter? In other words, you should try to apply what you hear from Shastra or from Sadhu in everything we do during the day. Check ourselves against it. Check. We can check our own behavior during the day. Am I behaving according to Shastra? Conscient de tout ce que l'on a, de ce que l'on a entendu, et vérifier qu'on l'applique tout au long de la journée. Of course, there's a, there's a period, and actually there's a period there of, of adjustment or of transformation or whatever. It doesn't necessarily happen. It can. It usually doesn't happen like that. It takes time, reminding ourselves. Ça peut arriver tout de suite, mais en général, ça prend un peu de temps. Ça peut arriver à cela. And there's bound to be a degree of how I feel, what I fear. As long as we're not actually on a realized last one. But the desire to change, the desire to follow guidelines, which can help a book change, if that's there, then we're on the right path. situation conditionnée. It's one of the natural propensities of conditioned life is defense. C'est une des tendances naturelles de personnes conditionnées. There's bound to be an element of that until we actually, you could say, take down the fence which is covering our consciousness. Then there'll be no more defense. Yes, the defense. Non, sur la défensive. We have all these conditionings and attachments, experiences, etc., which are obviously to be taken into account. But we have to realize that they are, in them, in of themselves, at least they are actually, in, in a sense, obstacles to our freedom. Bien sûr, on peut prendre en compte certains <coughs> goûts et couleurs personnels, mais on doit réaliser finalement que tout cela n'est qu'un obstacle vers notre véritable liberté. Suddenly drop everything, but we have to slowly yukta varaga. We have to try to utilize things appropriately to our situation, so there's a gradual change of perception. N'arrive pas d'un seul coup, peut-être, mais graduellement, ce yukta varaga, cette façon de tout voir, de tout utiliser au service de Krishna, c'est ça qui va changer. Otherwise, all day we should be trying to apply what we heard in our eating. In our walking, in our talking, in our activity, in our sleep, in everything. Cette juste vision que nous, que nous avons entendue, on doit toute la journée essayer de l'appliquer dans notre façon de vivre, de manger, de marcher, de se relier avec autrui. Again, we, we more than likely we're not so advanced to be able to pick up. We need guidance even during the day sometimes. We can misinterpret how to apply it many times in different situations. We become a little fanatic, or a little bit rigid, or a little bit offensive, even sometimes. Mais bien sûr, on a besoin même d'être guidé dans la journée pour savoir comment appliquer ce que l'on a entendu. Sinon, on peut avoir tendance à être un peu fanatique et même trop rigide. That's a very big subject. Your daughter, where are you from? Uh, from uh, Luxembourg. Where? Yeah. From Luxembourg. From Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Oh, you came all the way down from Luxembourg. You go to Bangladesh? Yeah. Part of the community.
here? First time here? Yes. Hare Krishna. How long are you staying?